Hey guys, so welcome to the second episode of STL Algorithms and in this episode we are going to cover some more algorithms apart from those that we have already covered in part 1. So if you haven't checked that video, uh, go and first check that video out because there we have covered 5 very interesting and very useful algorithms provided by the STL standard template library. And to use algorithms, the first thing that we have to do is include algorithms header file. And now we are going to uh, check out these algorithms on vectors but uh, basically those containers that are providing you bidirectional access like a vector or it might be a list you can use these algorithms for those containers okay so first of all uh, let's us create a vector of integers and let's have the values 1 2 3 4 and 5 here now let's create another vector of integers and let's have 1, 2, 3, 6 and 7 here and yeah let's create another vector of int called c and let's have it a size of 10 so that uh, we are sure that it contains 10 elements and we can always uh, have all these elements fit in that vector. Okay, so the first algorithm that we are going to cover today is mismatch and using mismatch we can find the first mismatching elements from two vectors uh, or two containers that provide bidirectional access like vectors or lists. In our case, we are going to com compare A and B and find the mismatch that is 4 and 6 that are first mismatch in A and B sequence. So what we can say is we can simply uh, declare a pair so let's say pair and this pair is of vector of int iterator because uh, the mismatch function itself it returns a pair of two iterators pointing to uh, the two containers that it's matching okay actually finding the mismatch so let's call this p and let's say p equals to mismatch and uh, we are just going to put the ranges for a and b so let's say a dot begin for the beginning and the end of a, a vector a dot end and then b dot begin and then b dot end okay and now let's see what the output is so let's console log this so let's say c out and we are going to dereference the uh, iterators so we are going to put a asterisk marks in front of them so p dot first and then we simply put a comma and then we dereference p dot second to get the values okay. so now let's run this code and find out what the output is and as you can see uh, we have got 4 and 6 here that is the first mismatch between A and B so this is how mismatch generally works we can also uh, overload mismatch giving a predicate function so in this case it will take two values to compare A and B so let's give simply int A and int B you can also use and person const whatever you like but I'm, going, I'm just trying to keep this thing simple and we are going to find the first mismatch where the value of A is greater than or equals to the value of b okay uh, so in general whenever the value is greater than or equals to it's not going to give us the mismatch but if the condition is false that is b's value is greater than a then we are going to find the mismatch so in this case we should get 5 and 7 as our output so now if we run this code you will see that we indeed have 5 and 7 that is first con uh, not agreeing to this condition and returning false and that's how mismatch is returning this value. So apart from mismatch, there are some other algorithms and also uh, to make this uh, statement sort for P, we can also say auto P here. So yeah, auto P and then we need to, we don't need to specify all these big things and the code really becomes simple. So now let's uh, see some other algorithms uh, that are very useful and for that, we will be printing out C. So let's declare a for loop. Let's say for uh, int x belongs to C. 
and we simply want to see out x okay nothing too fancy and currently if we run this code we will see that uh, c is indeed containing some initialized values and those values are zeros so yeah c has 10 zeros and what we want to uh, perform is we want to find uh, the all the union values of a and b now what union does is union if you have uh, had a concept of sets then union uh, let's get these things back first so the union uh, takes all the values but doesn't do, take the duplicate values like 1 2 and 3 they're going to have been initially used once and then we will be 4 5 6 and 7 so just let me show you the implementation and you will understand so let's say set union the names are very self-explanatory and to do the set union we first need to give the ranges so a dot begin and then a dot end and then we have b dot begin and then we have b dot end and then uh, we have our c dot begin where we are going to insert the values okay b e g i n okay. we are going to insert the values and now uh, uh, here should be a comma and let's run this code to find out what's the output of c So as we can see that uh, from both the value sets, it has taken the values, unique values, and it has spread uh, put them inside set union. Okay. Now you should uh, at least try to have these values unique for a particular uh, container. Otherwise, uh, it's going to have multiple values in some cases, some implementations. Because different compilers they they, uh, they implement the, the standard template library according to their needs. So uh, that kind of thing happens sometimes whenever you are using standard template library but most of the genuine functions they are almost same for every library member so we also have set intersection p r s e c t i o n uh, is intersection let's say and uh, if you run this code you will say and by the way i hit control plus uh, space bar to fill the uh, values that were popped up okay and now as you can see that we have only the intersection values that is 1 2 and 3 okay that are uh, common between a and b actually that the intersection mainly means now we also have set difference so we can say set underscore difference so we will set set difference and if i run this code now we will uh, get the different values that are present in a but not in b that is the present in first set and not in second set so in this case we have four and five that are present in a but that are not present in b that set difference means and we also have set symmetric difference uh, what will uh, get all the different values that are not present in a and present in b and not present in b and present in a that means that are not in the intersection of a and b okay we have already discussed about intersection in a sort so set symmetric difference this function here so let's run this and find out what it outputs so as you can see that 4 and 5 they are present in a but they are not present in b and 6 and 7 that they are present in b but not present in a so we have this output here using set symmetry difference now you can use these things whenever you are trying to merge two lists or something like that i don't know that that depends up to you but there is also a function very handy function that you can use to merge two sorted lists and you don't if you don't want to just uh, let's say a is also sorted and b is also sorted and you don't want to let's say you don't want to uh, just have the unique elements but you want also you want to have all the elements that is the 10 elements of the 10 elements they are needed to be merged just like merge sort if you have read the algorithm about merge sort uh, that merge we are talking about so that function is very simple we just say merge and uh, merge is merg actually merg merge and uh, the first thing that merge takes is um, just almost like set intersection or set uh, union a dot begin so let's just fill these things out a dot end and let's have b dot begin and b dot end the two ranges and then our destination and that is c dot begin 
uh, the iterator uh, to our destination and now if we uh, see the outputs of c we will see that a and b have been successfully merged and also their order have been kept uh, just like you see in merge short that is one one two two three three and then four five six seven okay so if you don't understand what merge is then you just search in google and uh, youtube you will find what merge does actually in case of merge short and you will find out what this much function actually does and in some cases you might need this function i don't know but yeah it's there now another very interesting function provided by stl that we are going to cover up today is swap and what swap does we have already seen swap in work in whenever we are we were, uh, we, were we were going through our uh, container series for vector and other containers and what swap does it swaps to containers so let's say we want to swap a and b okay as simple as that and now let's have x belongs to a and print all the values of x and then let's have a separation here just to be clear and then uh, we can have these things and then we can just print b okay so x belongs to b we want to print all the values uh, nothing too fancy and now if we see that indeed the values of a are swapped with the values of b and the values of b are swapped with the values of a so that's how you can use swap so now let's say you don't want to swap the entire arrays or the entire vectors but you want to swap uh, particularly three elements from a uh, at uh, the third from the third position of b this is your condition so what you can do is you can use swap ranges instead of swap and for, for swap ranges to be used uh, the first thing you need to specify the range for a so a dot begin in our case and we want to take three elements so let's say a dot begin plus three so we have the three elements and just we want to swap them with b dot begin plus two okay that is with the second from the second element of b okay so let's say b dot begin plus two now let's run this code and find out what the output is and you will understand what swap ranges does so as we can see here uh, the first three elements of a that is one two three has been swapped with uh, the elements that are present in b and here that is three six and seven that is here these three values have been swapped with these three values and that's how we can partially swap uh, those uh, arrays in case of uh, in case of using swap ranges so i think we we can also cover another function here just quickly uh, that is uh, let's say we just we don't want to know what the position of the um, value is or where the value is situated but we just we just only want to know for that we can use find also but we just want to understand why whether the value is present in a container or not that's our requirement and we want that thing to be extremely fast in our case we want to iterate so using a uh, time complexity of order of let's say log n and if you have uh, had some algorithm experience then you will see that this is uh, what binary search gives us so <laughs> exactly we are going to do that so we just uh, binary search gives us a boolean value uh, say setting true or false so we can say bool uh, let's say is present and uh, that's equals to binary search so we can say binary search and we want to search in a a dot begin and a dot end and we want to search for three okay so yeah let's check the output so let's see out uh, if the value is present so is present and if is present we are going to say yes else we are going to say no else we are going to say no Okay, as simple as that. And if we run this code, we will find out that indeed uh, three is present, and it's saying yes. And now, if we just uh, search for let's say eighty nine, which is obviously absent in our array, we will say no. Okay, so that 
wraps around uh, today's algorithms those algorithms that we, i wanted to discuss today uh, in the next episode of particularly algorithms part we are going to discuss some more algorithms some more interesting algorithms and some uh, a little let, little bit more complicated algorithms so thanks for watching and hope to see you next time bye